So one of my points is with Stephen, who's not here yet, and so I won't get into that, but it is important, the whole question of blobs versus... Uh, Tim, I don't know if you got to hear the recording of yesterday. We, we went at some depth into um, argument schemes. And I said, for me, argument schemes were a layer beyond where I was going, <laughs> uh, more detailed, more refined. But it was something I wanted to support eventually. And that meant, uh, I may have, it, Sorry. Um, that meant uh, argument schemes, the, for example, minor premise, major premise, and classical syllogisms, all the premises have roles, and the roles are important for defeaters. So that means maybe we want multi-argument premise after all, if we are to have something that can be refined into um, argument schemes. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm giving up on compound claims. I still think compound claims have a reason to be, but I'm saying you know sometimes uh, we want to identify different roles of premises in the argument, and maybe we need both. Uh, I'm more and more, uh, oh, here's the other link. So yeah, sorry, <laughs> uh, have to leave, apologies. Okay, no problem. <laughs> it was just getting good. I was waiting yeah. to hear his punchline there. But it's yeah. teasing us, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess it's in the uh, yesterday's video that I didn't watch, so. Yeah, I, I, I didn't upload it, but I'm doing that right now. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, I, don't, yeah. I was there. I, I don't think they got very, it, it was mostly discussing argument schemes. And I think for all of us, it's kind of like that's a, that's a nice to have later on, like Mark Antonio. Can you give an example of an argument scheme? Is that an inference scheme or is it something our else? Tech, our tech stuff like that, where you're saying these arguments are, this argument is fallacious right like an appeal to authority argument from authority where you know part of that argument is you have to prove their authority in the matter right yeah. i just um, sent a link in the chat with a list yeah that, right. so they were discussing that list yesterday yeah so and that's that's very similar they're all coming at it from different angles but basically it's a classification system for this the type of argument you're making what was really important, uh, interesting about this one was that is that they also list the defeaters. Um, so you're saying, oh, someone's going for argument analogy. Here are the ways that you kind of counteract that, which isn't just useful in a de debate, but it's also useful for your own thinking when you say, what am I claiming here? Oh, it's an argument to authority. And then like, you know, here are the ways to defeat that. So then you can go through it. So I, I think that was really useful. I don't think it's our our top priority, our top priority is still just getting a meaningful collection of all the facts, right? <laughs> or all the, all the uh, argumentation um, rather than analyzing it. Uh, and of course, Mark Antoine seems to be very passionate about being able to do diffs uh, between them. My passion is scoring. Tim's passion is just having <laughs> the list and having it well organized and then seems like steven it's seems scoring like and i would everything. say it's scoring and <laughs> scoring and curation um right yeah yeah curation yeah but i i have a yeah I, yeah but it seems like curation is a slightly higher priority for you i mean the scoring is useful useless without curation right <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's that's sort of yeah. um part of the, this question about a base layer versus another layer, you know, as long as they're all compatible, it's fine. But uh, there are a, a lack of structure messes up scoring. Scoring becomes useless. Um, you know, we, we, one thing I started to talk about when I was just arriving at my destination yesterday um, was, 
some of the heuristics for what makes a good scoring algorithm and you know so there, there was the you know you're scoring there's something wrong with your scoring algorithm if an argument in support of something can hurt its case right um the um one of the one of the things I have in my heuristics, which isn't very clearly defined. Oh, my dog's got to go. Out. Um, neat, go Did Tim's dog just ring the doorbell? <laughs> yeah, and she's yelling at me for not not seeing her. Out, so. Oh, I see. Uh, Felix, what is what is your passion in those areas that I mentioned are a different one? What's your priority? um preventing the ship from sinking i guess <laughs> but like um technically or, or conceptually it's the whole uh curation algorithm civil attack stuff like how oh, okay. how, so, yeah. how do we make a group of people actually decide what which changes get accepted and which are rejected so it's a form of curation but it's more handling the, malicious the most, handling malicious yeah but yeah curation in the most general sense basically mm -hmm. like that could also be applied to other systems yeah some of our curation assumes good intent on everyone's because that's the simplest thing to do right um but handling malicious intent is interesting i don't know if you read my once i wrote down the whole a whole page of what i what my current state of thinking is about these systems. I don't know if you had the time to read it. I, I read it, but uh, my memory doesn't work after. Okay. But uh, it was, I think it's interesting to know each, each person's top part. Like if you had to choose one, um, what would you choose? Yeah. I, so it's yeah basically like high level overview of everything and actually making this a product and not something that we endlessly talk about but at the same time like getting it right so maybe impossible <laughs> yeah yeah so it's, i yeah i don't have the perfect solution yet See, like, I, neither I, of us does yeah but, i mean i yeah oh, I, if you're talking about getting things out like a, a useful product i think uh um jamie and i's kind of idea of having professional moderators and skipping the moderation thing is kind of the quickest path to market. Yeah, my, my, uh, yeah, no, 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 my, my, my priority, I would have to say is like canonicality and, and that includes like the deduping um, and all well, the things that go yeah. into canonicality, like the permanence and, and it would have to be crowdsourced. Um, those are the main things because you don't think you can do I, canonicality. I mean, depends on what you mean by crowdsource. I'm talking professional moderation, so not crowd moderation, but it still could be crowdsourced. Well, two, two maybe, I mean, that's things. that's that's the that's the yeah, that is the the white paper approach. I, I kind of considered it to be a first step sort of thing. Um, because I don't, I don't know if you can do effective um, curation in the crowd, but maybe you do it with privileged roles. Um, so that's something I'm definitely uh, into exploring, right? But, but like the fundamental thing, my fundamental thing is it has to be something that is permanent, transparent, and trusted because without that, I just see it as being yet another website that some people are gonna find interesting and most people are gonna ignore. Yeah, uh, it's just, uh, we, we, we are spending a lot of time on the mechanisms of crowd curation. And I don't think you, that's a, that's a necessary requirement for something that is trusted and yeah, I would put that in the realm of untested, and which means that I think both. I think that's true, um, you know. And I can have opinions. I have arguments for both sides, but I don't have. Proof. Right. We'd have to test it. Well, so it, it might be interesting, though. Yeah, to put a little. I was actually thinking about setting up another meeting this week and talking about what are the next 
kind of actions we can do to get to do more of a lean approach. Now, I'm not against um, or an agile approach. I'm not against doing this deep dive and, and, and handling everything. I think that that's a great process. But I was thinking also maybe in parallel, because we have unlimited time, apparently, um, it'd be interesting to start doing experiments in public and start uh, doing some of that stuff. Of course, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing with Gullybot. So, but I don't, uh, what do you I don't want mind? to distract. What do you have in mind? Like things like Gullybot, like little products we test out or? Yeah, yeah, which would, would, which would be like Gullybot or Society Library where you, uh, the challenge with Society Library is the topics she's choosing are so large. Um, but yeah, taking smaller things and start doing it um, and still having that feedback loop, but the 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 un the unrealistic or the the pieces that can be done now is the way that crowd curation thing because the, the the crowd uh, moderation and curation just because that is a hard it's hard enough nut to crack in just comment sections much less a hierarchical <laughs> or, or or not even hierarchical what is it it's a matrix no it's a what's we the term for the graph. Mark Antoine's always saying it's not just a graph. He's saying an inter uh, uh, lattice, lattice, lattice right? Yeah. Feature lattice, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyways, yeah. So I just thought that would be fun, but you know, I, my bias would be like, well, well, that's what I am trying with Holy Bot right now. But right, I have I have a couple ideas, but I'm you know, and they pop up according to what I'm interested in at the moment. Um, sure. Some are more because they're commercial and they could help fund other work others are more interesting from the structural or the uh you know impact side of things i guess but the idea that i'm like I, I was i'm almost getting the energy to try to build something you know I, I don't i don't have time or energy is is the problem but if i did what i would build right now um is something that would help society library um it's, you remember I, I mentioned um, like it would be cool if we could take kind of trending, controversial um, thought leader type um, subjects and break them down. So the, the one I was taking a look at actually involved a couple different things together. It was uh, something that Joe Rogan said and then Dr. Fauci responded to, and there was a big hubbub about it. And then uh, Dark Horse, I think it's called Dark Horse, the, the Brett Weinstein and, Brett Weinstein, and yeah, yeah uh, and his wife um, responded. And then this podcast that I listened to called Serious Inquiries Only responded to the Weinstein, the Dark Horse, um, commentary on that and i so thought yeah, that was an interesting yeah. exercise because it's it's essentially it's taking a debate that's happening in public that a lot of people are seeing and the problem with public debate is is each person gets their long-term responses but it's interesting because serious inquiries only uh breaks their response also into trying to pull out different arguments that the other one made so they're in parts responding to the parts of the other group um, so I tried to map it all out. I started doing, I ran out of time because it's, um, it's like an hour of dark horse comments. It's about 15 minutes of Joe Rogan and it's two hours of serious inquiries only. I got as far as 40 minutes into the dark horse and it's like, it, it's at least three minutes per minute of content for me to be mapping it out. So I started kind of really? thinking about, yeah, because I'm putting that, it well, into that's not a map. just collecting the claims. It's actually figuring out where to put it in the map, which is always. Yeah, and, and, and not fully refactoring it along the way, but at least trying to get a general place so I can go in and refactor it. And it, it brings up a lot of questions because for one thing, you have to pause sometimes and think, you know, wait, what the hell are they really saying here? What, what, what argument are they really making? Especially Joe Rogan he kind of skirts around things. And there's kind of this thing where uh, like the, one of the guys he was talking to is no, no, I'm a sheeple. I went and got the vaccine. I'm a sheeple. And, uh, and it's interesting. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, it's more uh, like yeah, cultural know, innuendo like... towards arguments, but uh, yeah, I didn't I map think, that one yeah. specifically, but there are, there are less extreme versions that are hard to map or, or may be throwing in a bunch of assumptions in the mix. So sometimes you really have to kind of pause and parse. And also I have to uh, annotate which source at what time uh, stamp you know, I, I'm not I'm not going as far down as which person said it. I just said, you know, this video at that time, and this was more or less what they were saying. But they speak in context, so you have to rephrase. And so what I was just picturing is a tool where you could essentially just kind of either transcribe or just type um, as you go. You could pause and say, now I'm on this one, and you try to keep up. And it could even be like whenever you hit enter, it automatically records the source and the time and you can modify it a little bit and you keep going and then you you restructure um you know, I, yeah yeah I, I was thinking about doing something like that and i know there are tools from our tech and stuff that help you do that kind of thing but i find them really clunky and i want it as simple as possible essentially kind of like what i'm doing with the the diagram.net um you know claims and the other claims and the bubble for the support and yeah uh, uh, you uh i really need to convince you to change those envelopes to another symbol there's a way to do that <laughs> i didn't i just didn't really? stop it, it was out of the box it was an out of the box um, oh yeah i know that's thing. the default so symbol I, yeah. 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 Gosh, you'll have to give me access. I'll go change them all, and then you can just copy them instead of. I'll just make them all Atlas holding up the Earth. This is <laughs> <laughs> um, so. I I have a researcher that I've been using for Gullybot, and I could at least have her go through and collect all the claims and quotes, timestamps, source, and then have her propose rephrasings and argumenting. Uh, and then mapping, yeah, I mean that, and then you know we could get in there and improve the process. But but here's the thing is, and and that that is what uh, Jamie does with Society Library. She has people right. do that. Well, I, but, and my person is from Jamie. Yeah. Okay. I, I, th I but think my the key, experience. Yeah, okay, go ahead. No, yeah, my experience is having that as a as a pre mapping step doesn't work. It doesn't save time. It's got to be like the tool needs to be the mapping tool. You need to be able to do it as fast as just typing stuff in almost, um, but already be able to kind of arrange it as you go. Well, like a um, key binding based um, graph editor. That could but work. you don't think yeah. that that this researcher could eventually get to be as good as you at doing these? Yeah, well, you mean putting it into... I don't into, need to save her time. She's into debate map. No, hour. I understand that. <laughs> no, 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 she could. Um, but yeah, put it, put it I'm just thinking of a tool that it. makes it easier because debate map isn't quite set up for that. It would be like a... Yeah, civil, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm suggesting that rather than building the tool, which I do agree we, we should build that tool. Um, it, it, is for now temporarily to get something out to the public is to just throw money at it and training rather than our time because we're builders and not um, doers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, Timothy's more of a doer than I yeah. am, but I'm, I don't actually do anything. I just build things for other people. <laughs> yeah. work. Just, I don't work. Oh, a delegator. I, I should be a delegator. I need to learn how to do that. Just so give like responsibility, so yeah, responsibilities to people. It's the best way to delegate. Yeah. Right. Um, anyways, uh, I wanted to say like the whole mapping only has value if people can access it somehow. And well, with, and that's with that, I mean, of what, yeah. it, there should be a page to be found in Google at a high search result. Stack Overflow. That's, that's like. what I wanted to do with this tool is um, the first thing is it, it's enhanced for transcribing and saying where it came from and all that. Um, and then that map would be one color. And, and probably you need a separate thing. You need the actual words. And this is something Jamie does. You need the actual words and then you need the uh, transcriber's interpretation of claims, which would be a separate color, but you'd show this came from there. And then you would need, you would need to let people in 
and them putting their own arguments. Because for example, in fact, I see, when I watch this, I see arguments I, I wanna make against what somebody said. And it's like, well, that's not my place to put that there, but I want that to be there. Um, but so, you know, public comments or arguments would then come in at a different color and react. So, I, yeah, I, I think all of those are great things, but the question is what's the minimum? Uh, so having it come up in search results, that's a long-term goal. You have to earn that through link backs and stuff like that, depending uh, on the algorithm. Not but so at much, least, actually. Like but if, at least if the content website, is simple and the pages are fast, it's it's not so difficult to be found well, because these are long-term, long-tail uh, search results, basically. But, right, right. Well, and that's still on how it's displayed. And you're muted, Tim. You're muted, Tim. <laughs> I was just so sorry there was a fun. little dance going on here no I, uh, I would also want to just link that right into the YouTube video that I transcribed it's like hey this is uh, all the arguments you made everybody come in and right, you know, what right. did I but get I mean, wrong is right. that, but are you, you saying a, there's a comment against that right but is is there no value in using debate map or goalie bot and and us sharing that on on our social media you know debate maps not searchable goalie bot is goalie bot would show up on and i can improve that um, yeah but but you guys sharing your content on social media is very limited i don't right. care if it's the, the, limited i only need okay so the goal is not is not to change society's mind or change people's mind the goal is to get feedback on our project so that we can improve it you only need five to 10 feedbacks in order to make a major improvement. Anything beyond that, you're getting repetitive feedback. Um, I product, would say yes. Yeah, but my you, goal is a different one. But more users is better. Yeah, but and, I, I'm and, saying that, that yeah. you, it'll be, you'll get to your goal quicker if you take this intermediary step is what I'm saying. I'm not saying What's, we're hitting any How do you know? What's my I'm goal? just saying. <laughs> <laughs> because I've known you for two years now. Uh, no, because that's that's agile product development, right? You know, you, you put something no, out but there. That's, the, that's the point is my goal is you get some feedback. Yeah, that, that's not my goal, though, is agile product development. My goal is. Well, no, no, but the goal agile product develop is, is never is never a goal. Agile product development is a process to get to a goal. And the goal mm -hmm. is right. you can state your goal and then. We'll talk about how to get there. Cool and also I'm saying is that we're already <laughs> we're already achieving your goal through the long internal process of all these conversations. But if we wanted to start getting a little bit of feedback and ideas from out external to us, then we could do small experiments that have nothing to do with SEO and nothing to do with anything else. It's just we need to do an experiment and get some external feedback. What if are you we wanted talking? to are you talking about the simple product UI feedback that you need for like simple products? Because somehow this has been done already. There's like Kialo and, and many different platforms. And what we're str struggling with is the model, like the underlying thing that people need to deal with. Well, I think there are a few assumptions that we're making that I'm not saying are wrong, but that aren't in Kialo and haven't been tested. And I think it'd be interesting to start getting stuff out there and also to have something to kind of show what we're working on while we're working on it. Yeah, completely agree. I'm just, I just guess that if people look at the product without being engaged with the content, they might give some distorted feedback. But on the other hand, if people come from a search engine and they want to know something and then they deal with the platform and cannot find what they're looking for, that's the real feedback we need. Not someone who's like, oh, I'm testing the product in an artificial manner thing or with pre well, but it, predefined I mean, but content. People, will be, people engage with the product, whether they come from the search engine or come from my social yeah. media. I mean, when my mom looks at it, she's not thinking, oh, I'm giving product feedback, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay i mean it's it's not exclusive we can do both i'm just right, saying right. in my opinion search engine is like the most valuable thing from my opinion 
but well, I guess I mean, we should do short both. It's a, yeah, it's kind of a short experiment. I, I don't think it'll be alive long enough to get any SEO action. Um, well, my, you know, I mean, my, my, search, but. my goal is to get attention to the kind of stuff we're doing. Um, and I want to try out, well, I want to get attention and I see that piggybacking on uh, on controversies of, of the hour is a good way to do it. Especially if you create a tool that helps people organize that discussion, right? So it's kind of like, oh, they said this and they said this and they said this and they said this. You know, these are their arguments and people can come in and say, yeah, no, this is wrong because of that or this is wrong because of that or, you know. Um, so it's it's essentially like seeding the debate with something that's already popular. Getting of course, yeah, completely in. agree. Like vaccines, yeah. for example, right? So many claims around that are not connected, that are like buried in so many different sources right now that should be connected and then be found somehow and people so people can navigate it. So um, for me, the, the, the simplest product that I imagine is actually not a graph visualization or anything. It's basically just a headline and a description and links to other claims. And make this indexable so people find it in long, long tail search terms with, with long tail search terms. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So would yeah, you it's certainly... You would... Yeah. I mean, so this is a hierarchy of sure. information still. Do you, are you imagining that it would show the claims and then there'd be links to deeper claims or all in one page? Yeah, that can be like, like or does the matter? most immediate thing is like, it, it basically should represent stuff we build with our structure. Like if we have claims supporting other claims, then we know, okay, on this side of the claim, here's the support links to the other claims that support this claim. And on the other hand, link to the claims that this claim is supporting, right? Just like having a very focused, uh, very local view of the graph on one page. That's easily, easy but to I consume. Think that, I think that's what Socrates is, right? Uh, I don't know if this is SEO, but I... It kind of is, yeah. But my, my, uh, my problem is that the the in terms of time and effort and all that it's too much effort to do that how the mapping it's too much the effort to go slide. through a single uh youtube video ah right your 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 manual mapping you yeah. too much effort yeah right I I, right well even if we hire someone to do it well no i guess um it depends on how good they are at it. We'd have to try that out. But but didn't Jamie do most of the work for some topics already? Like, but she doesn't she did want it. to publish the data, right? No, it's she did, but it's it's on spreadsheets, so it's not mapped out because the mapping takes too much work to go from a, a spreadsheet. You know the. Um, it is, the mapping is a contextual activity, right? So the, what you're saying is that the links are missing in the spreadsheet mapping? Or what, what is missing? Yeah. Because yeah. else we could just use the spreadsheets as an API yeah. and just visualize. It's unreadable. It's okay. unreadable. Hmm. Yeah. No, nobody's gonna look at that or get anything out of it. Um, and, the, and the reason is that debate map is not sufficient or why is it all in Excel or is it just doesn't- Or it's not in debate map. Uh, yeah. It, debate, it, it, yeah, it's it not in debate map. It just hasn't been done yeah. because it's too much work or? Yeah, I tried to do some. Um, you know, we, we, there were moments when Jamie was gonna get attention or do a demo or something. And so I spent several hours trying to convert them. But the, the information that's in the spreadsheet, first of all, it's all encoded in, in their language. So I had to understand their language 
of you know where it came from and what it's referring to and when somebody has created their own version of uh, uh, the claim and that sort of thing. Um, and you go back and forth and trying to refer and trying to understand and, and there's, there's jargon in there that um, you only get by watching up to there in the video. Um, it, it, it just ended up being more productive for me to go back to the video and go through it myself, right? And that was, you know, at least a three to one effort. So, uh, you know, two hour long documentary is a whole day of sitting through it, mapping if you have a whole day, which you don't. Um, yeah. Yeah, so in that case, I think crowdsourcing actually makes sense. So everybody focuses on their part at, where they feel like, oh, this isn't present, but I want to add this argument, then they add it, and then someone else does something else. Well, that, that's for the final debate, but if, you're, if the goal is to transcribe what somebody else said, even, even crowdsourcing, I don't think, works. I think you need one person that is deep into the context of everything they've said up to there to be able to interpret their words. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm totally uh, against context in the canonical debate, right? But in part because I understand that most arguments are made contextually and people don't understand what the other person's saying if they didn't get all that context first. And it takes a lot of effort to get just the context to understand exactly what they were saying. Um, in this case um, of mapping, that's it, they're using words you know, they're, they're using pronouns, they're using inferences to things they said earlier, they're using, you know, um, so. Uh, what, what's in, the end in, goal in, yeah. with, with mapping the existing content? So the end goal with because mapping I'm, I, I imagine you have many silos then for each content, you have this map, but are these the, interconnected or is that a goal? <clears throat> You mean each is each map connected with uh, like the map I did last week for a different YouTube yeah, video? Yeah, there are like ten podcasts about the same topic. They're probably interconnected because they if they're about the same the topic and you're wanting to do that, yes. But I would only do it if well, no, yeah, you could you could if they're about the same topic, you could do that. Um, like, and that's what I would want is to kind of start enriching with uh, okay, this source and this source and that source. And this is who, who said that at what point and that. Um, you know, what is the point? In this case, the point is not to be canonical about it. The point is for people, um, first of all, to come and look at this debate that's going on, um, which is long form. And, and it's generally you're watching a video for your side and you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the comments, there's somebody like flaming, um, saying they're all wrong or whatever. Um, and turn that into, oh, look, breaking it down. Here's what all the people said about this. And this is where they said it. Um, it's a different way to look at the debate. You're looking at it as a debate instead of a, your guys convincing, you know, <laughs> being the smart ones or something like yeah, that. But, but um, so that's, I think but, we could just have a huge, like one global map of all the claims with references to the sources and then like tag, tags or whatever that point directly to the positions in a video. And then you can say, okay, show me all the claims that have been made in this video. And then you see all that, just like what tags do. But if you want to see the whole picture of the topic, not just this video and like how it relates to other things, then you then you look at the claims individually and you just have the links to the sources. You don't need these isolated argument maps, I think. I, I think one of the well, challenges with with what Society Library has done so far is that the topics by necessity are very large. I think if we focus on things that have just less data, then it becomes more doable. And that's why I chose yeah. vaccines. There's a lot of data, but it's not as many as climate change. The, what, one of the things that struck me, um, especially while doing this, is 
it kind of goes down to, you know, thinking about our, our recent podcast interview, the difference between rhetoric and, and reason, reasoned argumentation, right? right? Which is when you're watching this video, you really get carried up in the, yeah, 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 they're making good points. Yeah, you know, they, they're doing persuasion on you. Um, and, and they can leave things half said that just sound good and you go with it. Um, by breaking it up into, no, this is what they really said. It lets the person kind of pause and go, well, I don't really agree with that one. I don't really agree. The, the Brett Weinstein one is, is to me a good example of that because you know they've really destroyed uh, criticisms of, uh, they really destroyed people who were criticizing Joe Rogan. But when I was breaking it down, I'm like, this is a total non sequitur flimsy argument, right? This, this whole thing, this, this 20 minutes was focused on essentially uh, uh, the, um, what was the term? Not deauthorizing, but like undermining the authority of this one person that said this one thing. And it's like, wow, they can talk a whole hour about the critics of Joe Rogan and show how there, you know, the there's no the substance world. there. But really what they did was spend a large point of that just kind of trying to undermine one person. And it didn't really, you know, go to the largest thing. So, so you know, what it, I find it interesting to break it down into those little things. I said, no, these, these were really their points was this and that and that. Do you agree with that? And so that's something you can look at at a yeah. glance and have, you know, not be in the right. context of their spell, essentially. Yeah. So would it be interesting if we had a space in the Kamal Debate Lab Slack where people could suggest smaller topics that I could have, an, you know, an internet researcher go in and, and sources and, and yeah, focus on, he said, she said, on, they said, on what was said rather than trying to flesh out the whole argument, but just taking either a single argument or two or an argument and some public responses and just mapping those and not saying this is everything. Um, and that narrows the scope. Um, I don't know. I, th I think an incomplete argument map has still value. If you no, can in fact, stuff, right? I think it's, what I think is, is the real value here is, um, instead of trying to get a complete argument, what you're saying is, look at this popular person said exactly this. Um, and then letting people come in and respond specifically to their points is exactly the engagement you want is because you get flame wars in the law in the comments section, right. Um, but it's much more interesting to be able to say, Oh, look, no, 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 that's totally a fallacy. Oh, look, that's totally this so that um, yeah, I think keeping it small and, and just to a single post, a single uh, media single page. Yeah. asset, yeah, single whatever thing. So you'd still need to have some sort of visual delineator saying this is what the, the, the original source said and this is people's response to that. Yeah, just have it in the shape of an article. Have the different sections. This is... These are the people that said that. These are the sources where you can find yeah. that being said. That's good for SEO, but which is important. Uh, but I don't think it's good for people to jump in at a glance, sort of thing. Why not? I want people don't read articles. Yeah, if it's super short, people read tweets, and and so the claims I, yeah, so the claims don't be... have large texts beneath them. Usually, yeah. usually it's a. Uh, a few sentences. So let's say we took Joe Rogan's thing and said, in this thing, here are the claims that that Joe or his, his um, the other people on his podcast said. And then, but then you, we also wanted to have that feedback from people. Are you saying just have a comment section and let people go wild? Or are you saying we want them to be able to respond to each thing? And the main thing is responding to each. Yeah, the main thing is responding at the at that claim, right? Yeah. So the article size would be here are the five 
top claims he made because a lot of times they'll make a claim and then they'll back it up right or they'll talk about that person is unreliable an unreliable source for 30 minutes right so you just put unreliable source and then have people come by and say oh that's argument to authority or the opposite of argument to authority right that's uh yeah i can't remember the term either <laughs> But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I guess we're saying the value from that would be to get people thinking about it, get some SEO juice, and be a small maybe, experiment. Maybe find more, like, like make it easy for them to contact us. We want some more people to get involved. Mm -hmm. It's it's is the, the goal is engagement basically. Yeah. I think so. Well, so not building the product. I, yeah. I mean, I still have that same kind of goal to test out Gullybot's scoring algorithm and figuring out how to. So my experiments are how are we expressing the scores and how are people understanding it stuff. So I've Well, once feedback. you know, once uh, we do this sort of thing and get some engagement we could easily say, oh, you know, and here, here are those claims mapped out in Gullybot. Go ahead and, yeah. you know, try check out this. You know, once, once we get people in, we have different tools of ways to play with that. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly the point where it would be good to have a standard to send data back and forth, right? I'm not sure how. Uh, well, yeah, for now, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, if people want to suggest topics, then I can have my researcher go in and do the initial legwork, maybe even write up the article. And then I don't know where we want to start posting that stuff. If we're talking about SEO, it, needs it should to be our be website, right? debatelab.com. Yeah. In uh, Tim, what you said is like that we all oh, we should have the standard to exchange data, maybe before that, it might be useful to just share the database somehow. Like if we build a new product yeah. to test something, then we use, for example, the backend of Gullybot or Socrates or whatever. I mean, I think in this case, a spreadsheet is still the best way to handle it. If it's just going to populate an article, it's not going to be very deep. Mm, how do you represent the links? Well, what are you link the links to the source material or the links to uh, links between claims? Like, well, you, you just have IDs. Okay, yeah, claim IDs and then say, okay, this ID supports that ID. So yeah. Like this, yeah. Pro you know, so here's its parent ID. What are you doing? You using right now, Bentley for Gullybot? Uh, Firestore. Yeah, I think that could work as well. So, and right now though, I'm storing everything as a blob within Firestore because when I started getting into having multiple links and querying it and querying across and getting the whole tree, it was too slow um, because it's not a real graph database. Um, yeah, but- the, So I just the, stored as a blob of data. Yeah, but, but you're visualizing whole trees, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you have For to now. do a tra traversal. And what I'm suggesting is just have a yeah. page. So then you don't need a traversal. You just need one step in another direction, like all the links. And that's it. And then let people yeah, so do the I, traversal. I'm, uh, well, I still, every time you want to show, if you want to, if you want to link, yeah, if you're linking to the parent by ID, but if you're not, if you're going to put a claim you still need a claim in its children. So that's not a far traversal, it's only one. Yeah, and you can set an index and just get the list, for example, of these claims. Yeah, I mean, I could also build that with 11T and Google Sheets. Because you just read through the sheet and generate the pages. Is there an Stack index pages. in the sheet? You Does can hit the API with, you, you can hit the sheet API and generate your own index. Read out I'm just wondering, like if you have 10,000 claims in the sheet and uh, you want to have that claim with that ID, is that fast? Or do they do a linear search? Um, what I, I generally, the data is small enough that I bring it all into memory 
in JavaScript and do it in JavaScript. And in JavaScript, you, you create a, a, a what's it called? A, a, you create a dictionary, which is, so you can, you can pull it out of memory. You don't have to do a linear search. A key, a key to index. There's a different term for that. I can't remember it. So it's pretty quick. Um, hash map or what? No. Yeah, right, hash map. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you put them in by ID and then you can search by ID and it's as fast as looking up a yeah. property on an object. But that's memory limited. Like for, yeah. I learned a lot from, from the- our Right, group. but we're, we're starting small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and if you, and if, you go, if you go past that, it's, it's substantially more engineering. Um, it I mean, like I can do this in, two, in a couple hours. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, I'm, it I'm takes more time to like, even think about the design. I'm just like, saying there's that, a there's a plug and play solution for that. Um, well, you could give graph data. No, I'm just just saying. Like I, I did this whole exercise with our Woost platform, where we basically loaded subgraphs from the Postgres database and loaded it all in memory in the front end and traversed it there, and there was so much effort to get it fast because like even at around like a thousand nodes, which happens quite quickly actually, like earlier than we expected, with a thousand nodes, you need to do some performance optimization already. And, um, and it, doesn't, it doesn't scale at all. And if you instead do a system where you don't visualize the whole tree somewhere and just have like, okay, show me the children and, uh, if the user wants to see more, they click a button, what exactly to see more, then you don't have to do all the traversals in memory. And you just lazily fetch the data and that's a super simple system, much simpler than loading it all in memory and visualizing it. Except I already have the code for that. Except it's already built. Except it's already built. <laughs> so there's nothing simpler than already using what exists, right? Of course. Um, no, but it's it's actually pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple to load up a whole bunch of rows in a database and then just write a script that queries what are the next two things. I mean, you have a lot of data going back and forth, but you want to statically generate sites, so it's SEO. So the time it takes doesn't matter, but running into a hard limit of memory, you're right, as far as scalability. Um, speed's not important, but scalability is. So yeah, that's, yeah. Pr that's still a pretty simple change. Even with Firestore, you just, right, instead of doing a blob, you just to have the key index be the ID and, and you store the, the actual claim. So that wouldn't be that wouldn't be that hard to change. It's just I don't, you know, I think if we're getting up to a thousand claims, it's not going to be, I mean, I guess you're saying an article isn't just an article is just the claim and its children. Yeah. And then you want to be able to link to the other claim. Like it's direct So it's kind of a yeah. So it is kind of which is yeah, which is similar to the Socrates interface yeah um that's not very hard yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean even to do it dynamically although for seo i'd rather do static yeah. side generation uh, so so what worked, worked well so far what what i tried once is uh uh have the lambda just return like have a cloud function like fiverr's cloud mm -hmm. functions um return the html and generate the page and return that directly, super quick. And you don't need yes. to statically generate websites, you just return the content mm -hmm. and make the URL path make sense somehow. And then that's your website with dynamic content. And if you have too yeah. much traffic, then you optimize. Well, cash. yeah, or, or yeah, you cash. Right. Yeah. And actually with Cloudflare today, you could have a, you could have a cloud worker that auto caches, right? Exactly. So, um, so yeah. So rather than even doing a static site generation, uh, yeah. Assuming you don't need a whole bunch of context. Yeah. You still need headers and footers and everything. Yeah. yeah it can that be, be that hard. extremely simple sites. So that's all interesting. I don't, I don't know that, yeah. I don't know that I have enough passion to build that right now. Um, but I do want to keep going with 
I, I would still like to use the, you know, Tim's idea of taking live arguments and putting them in Gullybot, using that to test my UI. Um, yeah, the thing is, like, what it, what I think you would need is like actual designations of like somebody actually said this, and here's the source. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what you need to that's that's the hook for getting people involved um you know i don't know if you want to create a fork of gully bot or you want to put it in gully bot or something like that well but, i mean it are you saying i mean right now gully bot can do links inside the claims they're just you know it's it's uh it's now um common mark or markdown right so I just have my researcher put the put the links and the and who said it and the time. But you want to, yeah, ideally so. you want it to be something like Joe Rogan said this. Or yeah, know. so I just have you want all the back out. backlinks basically at some point. It doesn't I don't know if you need to backlink to the specific point. Uh, I mean it, it might be enough for now just to have the sources listed on the side or something. But yeah. I, I think you would want to see specifically the things they said because that's where people will gravitate towards yeah, responding. Right. To. So I think yeah, in this one you would you'd probably put quotes and then you could just put a source link or have the whole quote be underlined or whatever, and it would take mm. them to if it's yeah, YouTube. No, yeah. Then, which actually Joe Rogan's not YouTube anymore unless they did a. He is. Song. Oh, he's not. That's right. He just. But no, I grabbed. I just grabbed snippets off of YouTube. That I, yeah, so if it's it was, a, I was if mostly it's mapping the, responses to him, but yeah. If it's in their pre-built snippets, then yeah, then I would link to, and you can link to time stamps in YouTube. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that could be doable in Gullybot. And I could turn off the scores, but it doesn't have what Felix wants, where it's um, a little bit more SEO friendly by having a page per claim. Um, but uh, I mean, that, that wouldn't be that hard to do. It's just a cloud function uh, returning some HTML, yeah. like doing the database it, query, returning the HTML. That's but it. also if we, wanna, if we wanna make a place, maybe we make a new channel to talk about, I don't know what to call it, topics, uh, small topics, something like that. And we put stuff in there, I could have my researcher do the research and share the data and just in spreadsheets for now. And then I'll be using them in Gullybot. And, and then if I have time or if someone else wants to take that and put it into, you know, an SEO friendly and put it on the CDL website in more of a soccer cheese sort of claim per page format, um, that's definitely doable. Now the CDL website, I, I did want to mention that's right now done in, uh, I can't remember, but it's, the, it's a React static site generator. I'd want to change that to, well, I mean, we could do Felix's suggestion of, of having it be cloud functions. But the other thing is I'd like to just convert it to 11 D. I I guess we need to do the cloud functions piece. Yeah. Um, but anyways, but I could at least have someone start doing the research. Although I guess the, the research like this will get stale pretty quick, right? Um, yeah, you, you want to throw it out there as soon as it's, it's trending. Or yeah. towards the downside of the trend, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we could experiment with Goldybot and see if it's really doable and how it looks, at least. And then someone can decide whether they have enough time to build this, to uh, modify the CDL site. We'll follow Felix's suggestion. I mean, Bentley, if you like, we can do a pairing session and have a look at your database and see if it's very simple to generate static sites from it. I mean, it is Not simple. Static, it'll but, just yeah. all—it'll all be in memory because uh, I'm just storing blobs of data, right? So I can't yeah. query. Um, no, it's—it's it's pretty quick conversion. I mean, I can make something that reads it and spits it out into rows, so you can query. Um, but I mean, I—I've had thousands of nodes in there, and I haven't had any speed issues. Even it, it's recalculating on every change the whole tree. Um, and it still happens in milliseconds um, in the browser. Of course, I guess that depends yeah. on the person's browser. <laughs> uh, anyways, 
we're getting close to the end of time. So does do y'all have any suggestions of what we would, I would do is making a another Slack channel helpful or is that um I mean, especially for like research and then collecting the data there, I think it's good because then it doesn't get lost because else if someone posts it in a general channel, then it's just lost. <laughs> and we, we do have CD scenarios, but no, that's more our internal stuff. No, yeah. Yeah, it, it would need to be, you know, something like trending or trending debates or trending, you know, something like that. Um, and probably CD dash trending debates. No, it's not CD because it's. Um, well, not yet. Generics. But if we did put it on the CD website, so so yeah. C CD okay. isn't for for um, the website. CD is the when we're specifically question. talking about designs for canonical debate, as opposed to soccer trees, okay. or as opposed to gully butt reason score. Okay, so hashtag trending debates. Yeah. I mean, I imagine you can take any like latest YouTube from any intellectual or podcast from any intellectual dark web person and you could find something mappable there. Yeah, just find whichever one is. I don't know if there's a way to kind of automate to find which one is getting the most reactions. In any I mean, moment. just take Google Trends, for example, and see if there's what, what's debatable with Google Trends. You know Google Trends, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I haven't yeah. used it much, but yeah. Yeah. Or just the most trending Twitter hashtags, whatever you, I, I guess it's easy to find topics. <laughs> Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think the real interesting, like what, what, what's an interesting thing is not like trending, like, oh, did you hear what this one person said, right? This one phrase mm -hmm. is somebody who's taking a longer look at a specific, um, issue because they'll make lots of claims along the way and try to support the issue across the board. Um, so it wouldn't be trending that you'd see on Twitter. Bless you. Thank you. We want to find yeah. it's like, uh, you know, thought leaders or whatever are trending. Yeah. They need to be meaty, but not too big. Yeah. It's a good meal size. Um, yeah. Like one, one that okay. really it kind of exploded and, and um, Jamie was all over was the, what was it called? Climate change. Uh -huh. No, no, no. There, there, was a, there was that documentary that was like a, a portmanteau of like conspiracy and something else. Uh, I can't remember, but there, there was, there, it was like really early in the pandemic, um, somebody talking about um, uh, how it was all a laboratory leak at the Wuhan uh, lab, right? Plandemic, plandemic, that was the name, plandemic, oh, right, right, plandemic yeah, right. document. So that's the kind of thing that really took on a life of its own. It would be interesting to break down, but that's really big, right? That, that, that's, that's a lot of work. And I, I kind of did that actually in debate map. That one took me about eight hours, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some, a smaller version of that would definitely be um, worth it. Okay. Well, if the next one you yeah. see, throw it in there and I'll have my researcher. Okay. I yeah, that's, I'll do that. One's still recent enough. Yeah. Any uh, anything? No, it's, I don't think so. It's, it's well, it's been a month. It was April twenty third, so it's been more than a month. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll, next next one that comes up, I'll let you know. Because um, there's there's been things like um, serious inquiries only that that podcast often does responding to public figure things. Like uh, one, one was responding to a book on uh, trans 
uh, transsexual theories, whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, those things are interesting sometimes just because then it's somebody responding point to point to somebody else's point. So I don't know. Okay. I, yeah, I got to go uh, and um, to throw in topics whenever I see them. And we'll let's keep talking about this. I don't know if you need a, ba a day now for yourself, Bentley, the Bentley day for <laughs> doing let's something iterative. Any, let, let's I mean, see if it gets any traction. I mean, more, more people can have my Wednesday because like I don't have anything urgent to talk about usually. So if you want you to be a guest have host. a day, Bentley, yeah. <laughs> take the Wednesday. Uh, yeah, let's, um, which would be today. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, today. we'll see. Yeah. yeah, you already did. Um, yeah, I already did. That's yeah. my goal is the takeover yeah. of the new Felix. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let's see if other people are interested or if people are already overwhelmed and want to keep focusing on the long term goals rather than the short term. Um, yeah. It has to be healthy. Okay, I got to go. I, I got my yeah. meeting. Yeah. Bye, Tim. All right. Bye. Okay, um, and I added you to the group and I announced it. So, I mean, to the new channel. So, if you have any yeah. ideas, let me know. Yeah, I'm just looking at Google Trends right now, but it's just just people. <laughs> UFO. Yeah, the US government's supposed to be releasing some new UFO stuff. So. <laughs> okay. Like China. Project Blue Book. Yeah, those are a bit it'd be nice to get a little bit longer sentences on that. So I, I haven't been able to make trends work. Maybe mm -hmm. even Twitter is better, even though you may not be able to yeah. use the tweet, you can see what's hot because they have a longer kind of sentence. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, it, in general, like for the static site stuff, um, a friend and I, because we're having so many ideas for so many projects that we want to do, we're basically building a, a framework to quickly bootstrap bootstrap mm -hmm. projects right now on aws and uh we're in the yeah. beginning but if you just want to bootstrap a project with a database and some cloud functions then you press a button and you have it and just fo focus on the business problem what are you using for caching or are um you cloud that? front the built in okay cloud front cloudflare or cloud front no cloud i guess cloud cloud front okay. it's like basically a uh, um Oh, that's the AWS static hosting one, yeah. on on uh, S S three buckets. Yeah. Yeah, but are you doing? So are you? Are you? So far, no caching. But it's of, auto of, of lambdas it's, it's yet. A, is yeah. it? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, the other thing is you could put Cloudflare in front of it, and it will it will cache the server response regardless. That's probably the easiest easiest option. Uh, right and now. I set mine at just a twenty four hour. So I only get hit once a day or once an hour, yeah. right? And you know, even if millions of people are hitting your site, then it it'll cash once an hour. And um, you know, if if your data doesn't change often, then that's fine. Yeah, which is probably um, the case for claims. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and actually, Cloudflare has workers right now too, so it'd be easy to have that point to. Uh, a database it's nice to have everything on on aws because it's a little bit more i'd like to do a cloud agnostic version but that takes time it does <laughs> anyways yeah yeah so we can play with that but i could start at least getting the data in the spreadsheets and then we could play around with it and see if you want yeah, to i'm not a bit of fan outside. of this spreadsheet solution i'd prefer it to be in the database a spreadsheet is a database. It's just not yeah, right. but just without <laughs> without an index. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, none of these are going to be, you know. Well, it's just a play waste place for a novice to enter data, and then you just need to get it into the database, right? Okay. I mean, if 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 there's a nice database that has a nice UI for entering data, um, then that would be sufficient too. Um, so yeah, I mean, okay interesting yeah so we don't have to yeah. program a user interface yeah for entering yeah. data that's a good idea yeah so but it wouldn't uh, be but any... a lot of the databases have pre-built ui so like mysql you know you can go in and enter records directly yeah but then yeah then it's not serverless anymore it costs money oh, right yeah yeah 
Um, although uh, Microsoft, I think, has a serverless MySQL. Um, but there might be other RDS relational data things that, that do. And like Firestore does, it's just very clunky. Yeah. So I could train someone to enter the data directly in Firestore. I mean, there's there are in-between solutions. There are like these, what's the name? There's like generic admin interfaces that you yeah, map right. to your database. Be table and yeah, yeah, and create. Yeah, maybe it'd be good to look into one of those. Yeah. Or well, what I also found, what I recently experimented with is a retool, like this whole no code tools mm -hmm. uh, where you can easily click a user interface and connect it to a database. And an air Airtable should be pretty good. And they do link? have record IDs. So can you map Airtable that to another be. database or query Airtable directly? You they, they have an API. Okay. Directly. So you could use it as your database. It is mm -hmm. a data. Airtable is a database, really. Yeah. Because they have work, defined right? columns and data types. Yeah. Um, it's just like if, if you use I just, one of these services, then you're locked in. <laughs> That's a bit. They, they, they allow you to export data pretty well. Um, so you're not very locked in. But yeah, you built your API layer. And stuff. Yeah. It's, like code wise, it's, you're locked in. But if it's only in. If you isolate your API code and you just have it pull out the data and throw it in yeah. into JSON and then read it, 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 it's not too hard to, it, the lock-in's not too bad. Um, it is a risk. Um, yeah, but okay, but, but, but I, see the, good UIs. I see the point, like a very simple data entry user interface that doesn't have to be beautiful. And then like, what you show to the users is like more streamlined and well yeah. visualized, but the data entry doesn't have to be, which saves a lot of work. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do kind of think that if, if our debates, I mean, I guess your thinking eventually will have like, you know, after a year or two, you'll have several times that you've talked about guns or something like that, and then it'll slow down. Yeah. But I think in this case, we're saying this is what this person said, or these two people said in their debate, or these two sites. Um, and I just don't, I don't see that getting above 10,000 records. So I don't, I don't know that. Yeah, because in, until I'm, we delete the whole system and rebuild it. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it shouldn't be isolated. Like if you isolate, yes, one, iso like one topic doesn't exceed probably the 10,000 claims limit but like if you have everything in one database flat and just interconnect yeah. i think that can get pretty quickly to ten thousand. see for for reason score some of the calculations require that a change anywhere in the map forces a whole full recalculation and so i needed a way to quickly get all the data out now if i stored the data at individual rows instead of a blob i could definitely make a caching process that would pull out all the data and then I have just, both worlds. I just haven't spent the time to do that. Triggers, like Firestore has triggers. Like if one run row changes, you can run the cloud function. And yeah. you can say like all, all, this will update all the rows that depend on it. And this triggers again and so on. So it cascades, that yeah. can be done. Yeah, as long as you don't get any loops. And then you have a thousand dollar bill from because <laughs> you just kind of churn your database. Yeah. You pay per update. Um, that's yeah. It, I just haven't had the time to mess with that. Algorithm needs so, to deal with uh, yeah. yeah. Needs to deal with cycles. <laughs> the the core code um, doesn't deal with cycles, but the core code doesn't presume that you're getting a blob of data. It actually goes back to a data source to get the next records. So if I did split it up my code base doesn't have to change that much. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I just hadn't done the additional integration to, uh, you know, just small steps. It, I did it in a way that it, it didn't, it didn't cost me anything. I just haven't built that bit. Yeah, of course. Um, 
just because I need it. Although I just changed the math again to where I no longer need that. It recalculates the whole system anymore because I couldn't, the visualization wasn't great. Anyways, <laughs> well, cool. I think we'll go ahead and close up this call. And uh, just if you see any topics that you think would be good, post them in there and I'll have a researcher mm -hmm. pull some data and we'll see how- I mean, goes. I guess right now it's vaccination. <laughs> But yeah yeah so that one i'm all, i yeah so i could do a vaccination so the one i'm doing right now is collecting all the stuff but maybe if i find two people in the public talking about it then just do another one that's just their um their claims i just people are so bad at phrasing things that i don't know that it's useful if it's close i mean it may, maybe you have to put the quote and then you have to do the little bit of analysis afterwards to give the context yeah. and to i think the claim is more useful and then just linking to where the claim was made even though it's not exact the, the exact same wording yeah like don't and then, then the then quote still, in itself right. and then you're still limiting the scope of the whole example to be the debate between these two people that was handled at different times and you're bringing it all into one space, but you're not including all the debates that anyone ever made about vaccines. So that was still lower the scope. Although I think the vaccine debate is small enough. I'm almost done with the data that I have right now. But anyways. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> all right. Talk yeah. to you later, man. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye.